Welcome to News and Views. I'm Danae Jones and it's my pleasure to bring you this week's segment. Today we're at the Harbourside Bar and Kitchen with its picture perfect location overlooking the natural beauty of the Cairns Esplanade and the Coral Sea. Harbourside Bar and Kitchen welcomes guests to Cairns' first exclusively natural wine bar with a new wine list that pairs well with its menu of paddock to plate far north Queensland cuisine. The natural wine bar at the Harbourside Bar and Kitchen is available to the public and regular masterclasses, wine tastings and wine dinners will be held to provide guests with an opportunity to learn about natural wine, meet with winemakers and most importantly enjoy many superb natural wines from all over the world. Today we are talking to Marianne Salvetti, the driving force behind the 120 year old Mossman Mill being saved. The Mossman Mill is Australia's last remaining grower-owned sugar milling company located in Queensland. Recently, FNQ growers voted unanimously to buy back the Mossman Mill after Mackay Sugar, which is now foreign-owned, decided it was not part of its future. The Mossman growers lobbied state and federal government to contribute $45 million to help them turn the mill into Australia's first bio-precinct. The campaign was led by none other than local cane grower Marianne Salvetti. Welcome to News and Views, Marianne. Thank you, Dana. So tell us how the Mossman Mill fight and campaign actually began. Look, it, it began with a uh, meeting in, uh, at the soccer club in Mareeba. Um, and we were advised that Mackay Sugar um, were no longer interested in retaining Mossman Mill um, and that they were going to give the growers the opportunity to um, either buy the mill outright or buy it in partnership with Mackay or they would go and sell it out themselves to a, an outsider. Um, and, um, and so uh, all of, a lot of the growers, Mossman and Tableland, were at that meeting um, and uh, we sat there and, and listened to something that we were very, very surprised about because we'd only rejoined Mossman Mill four years prior. Um, and so uh, we were given a challenge. And so why did they not see the mill as part of their future? Did they see that it wasn't making enough money or they just didn't want to uh, keep investing in the local community? What do you think it was? I think it was uh, more so that it was um, too far away from their main core business in Mackay. Yep. Um, and given the sugar prices, um, it was difficult to make uh, money out of Mossman Mill just being a raw sugar mill. Yep. Um, and I think that um, they felt that they had a better opportunity um, to find um, uh, an investor if they just had the Mackay mills rather than Mossman as well. And so I guess for you guys as growers, you're sitting back there seeing your livelihood basically being thrown up in the air and you got that fire in your belly and you led the charge. Well, absolutely. I mean, we thought that once we'd moved and become uh, shareholders of Mackay Sugar that, you know, we were home and hosed and our, our future for us and our children was, was cemented down. But unfortunately it wasn't. And at the time we were very stressed about the whole thing. But as time went on, we saw the opportunity um, and the, the passion for that opportunity and to see whether or not we could actually make it work uh, grew and grew and we, we were able to, to, to make the growers feel that same passion that, that, that our team was feeling. Um, and that really what, that's really what gave us the drive. And it's very much far north Queensland, isn't it? When you're pushed up against the wall, all of a sudden that fight comes out. I know I was sitting back watching you guys campaign and lobby for what you wanted to see happen there. And it was inspiring to watch. Now you've got 70 odd growers that now own the mill. Yep, that's correct. Well, we're in the process of, of um, securing their shares now. We're just doing all the final paperwork that's um, needed for that. So within about a month to six weeks, um, they'll, they'll all be sh uh, shareholders, it'll all be legally theirs. And so the employees that worked at the mill, you kept them all on? Oh look, they have been absolutely wonderful. Yes, we did keep them all on and, um, and I don't think that if we had lost them we would have been um, as successful as what we've been with the mill this year. Um, they certainly are sharing the passion with us and keeping that mill ticking along and and getting the cane in and um, it's just, you know, I spend two to three days a week 
um, in Mossman and I just absolutely love being there. The staff just go way beyond what you know our expectations are to make sure that this is all working for us. So. And I think there's a lot to be said for being in charge of your own destiny, isn't there? There's absolutely. over a hundred staff that you kept on there. Yeah, that's right. And I mean, the thing is that, you know, we, we are all aware that long term Mossman won't be viable um, just in, in the raw sugar scene um, because we've got so much competition by up and emerging the third world countries that are now starting to become, you know, more westernised and more more mecha me mechanised, mm. and basically are competing against us and doing it at a much cheaper rate because their wages are so much cheaper. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. we would not have had this opportunity if we had been with any other mill, because we would have had not had ownership or been part of the decision making. So now that we are, we are um, working tirelessly. To, to look at putting uh, projects in place that will return um, the money that's required to make the growers viable and keep the mill viable. Now, the growers themselves have put in a, about $20 million and then you've got state and federal government to put in $45 million. That's correct, yep. So the $45 million from the state and federal government, explain to our viewers what that's in aid of. Um, okay, so um, it's quite a mixture of things, but. Um, Predominantly, the federal funding um, has given us assistance with operation, um, with capital expenditure and with maintenance. Because we want to, we need to bring the mill up to 85% reliability. Mm -hmm. It's currently sitting at about 80. And to bring it up to 85, it means that we'll be able to supply the energy and the steam to the companies that are going to be building on the bio precinct. Mm -hmm. And we'll be able to be supplying them the feedstock and keep the mill running with the big ass at that reliability. Um, and so the federal government assisted us in that way. The state government also assisted us in capex and maintenance and operational, but they've also assisted us in the project side um, of actually um, putting together a project team to fully investigate every single possible project that we could look at um, utilising with the feedstock. Um, and also beyond that, other investors that are wanting to do other things that really want to um, be in that clean green uh, um, uh, rainforest and Great Barrier Reef type zone. So it's attracting a lot of interest. And so what does the bio precinct look like long term? You're looking at a whole different way of diversifying the industry, aren't you? At first we, um, we you know, looked at you know, projects that would take up all the feedstock. Um, and then we realised that we were better off doing a diverse number of projects so that um, we can actually go stage by stage through the mill and use the feedstock accordingly. Um, and so we're looking at things um, that involve food grade products. Uh, we're looking at uh, waste to energy projects. Um, we're looking at um, um, a, pro, a product that um, is a healthier alternative to sugar yep. um, and we're looking at um, intermediate chemicals for plastics. Um, there's quite a range of different things, yeast based products, fermentation based products that basically can work quite well um, together and utilise all of the feedstock. That's amazing. So it is. At what point do you think that the bio precinct will be up and running and we'll have some of these other products coming out of it? Well, we're, we're currently um, uh, working with um, two of the projects that uh, we anticipate will be starting pilots next season. Um, and also another one that's not a pilot, but will we'll still be commencing and, and will be meeting what the requirements that we need. Um, and so we're hoping that by April of next year, we will have bettered down the projects that will secure the mill going forward. That's amazing. Yeah. So in terms of all of these diversified products that you could be making out of the bio precinct, does that open up opportunities for other farmers outside of Mossman? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We are looking at you know, other biomass um, crops like sweet sorghum, um, we're actually currently working with another company that's got another product that um, would work well in one of the food grade um, uh, projects that we're looking at. Um, so I think um, the sky's the limit. It's, it's really just getting, getting that mill viable 
um, and then just using your imagination. Wow, I like the analogy, the sky's the limit. Yeah. We look forward to seeing what, what's next for you guys and we can see your passion and it's an absolute credit to you for being out there and fighting on behalf of the industry and bringing them all together, Marianne. Thank you, Dana. We, um, you know, we've got a lot of um, non-believers out there, yeah, but they also didn't believe that we'd buy the mill and, and we did. And, uh, and so now the next step is, oh, well, they won't make it work. And, you know, um, I mean, at the end of the day, um, there, it's, there's been a lot of things tried in the sugar industry that haven't been as successful as, as what they, you know, believed. So, but the things that we're looking at are, are totally different, and I think we're at a stage in technology where the world's ready for some of these projects, and we're, we are. I consider ourselves a boutique mill. People could come to us to talk directly to the owners. The owners can make a decision there and then. Um, and, you know, they don't have to go back to, you know, overseas owners to make those. We're not a corporate. Yeah. Um, and I think um, that is certainly attracting a lot of people. Absolutely. And securing the industry for future generations. Absolutely. As I said, the sky's the limit. And we want our, our kids are on the land now. We want our kids, their kids and their kids to stay on the land. I love it. And I look forward to the update. You can come back on the show and tell us all about it. Thank you. Thanks, darling. Thanks, yeah. Marianne. So there you have it, folks. Marianne Salvetti pushing forward with the cane growing industry and creating new frontiers. Watch this space. I have no doubt that it will be successful. Please share this story and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'll see you next week.